I do some volunteering at a hospital three times a week that involves me reporting to the hospital at 5 a.m. I enjoy the volunteering. I've been doing it for almost two years, and I have never had any issues. That is until last week. Last week, I was a bit early on one of my volunteering days, and I had about 30 minutes before I had to report in. I normally would have just waited in my car, but I'd been pretty stressed about things in my personal life, so I thought I'd go for a little walk to burn a little steam and clear my head. After all, this is in a pretty nice area, upscale West Los Angeles. So what could go wrong? It's roughly 4.30 a.m., so naturally the streets are all quiet, but it seems pretty peaceful. But then, up ahead, I see somebody walking in my direction. Kind of odd, I guess, but I didn't think too much of it. Him being out here at this hour isn't inherently suspicious. After all, does being out here at this hour automatically make me suspicious too? So I keep walking, and we make quick eye contact when we cross paths, and I suddenly got a very bad feeling about this man. I can't explain it other than instant. Sometimes you just have a bad gut feeling about somebody, you know? That's what I felt when I passed this man, and I immediately went on high alert and made sure he wasn't going to approach me from behind or something. Very soon after walking by this man, and I'm talking like 15 to 20 seconds, I pass by one of the many parked cars on the street. This is LA, so there are lots of parked cars on the sides of main streets. Except this parked car is different. There is a man sitting at the wheel, and the man waves at me and beckons me over. Again, pretty damn creepy, but not inherently worth freaking out over. But as I keep walking, I realize that while the car was parked, it wasn't off. It was simply in park. Because this car starts driving in the same direction that I'm walking, and it drives at a pace essentially matching my walking speed, at this point I've had enough, and my brain is saying, nope. So I immediately turn around and start speed walking back in the direction that I came from. Then, I saw something that, in the moment, scared the fuck out of me. The first man that I'd encountered walking the other direction, which was now probably like 40 seconds ago, was now standing pretty close to me. Like way, way closer than somebody who'd been walking in the other direction should be. And then, he makes eye contact with me and then he starts walking in my direction. I am incredibly suspicious and more than a bit nervous at this point, so because it's pretty dark out, I decide to play a hunch. My car keys fold out in a manner very similar to a switchblade, so I immediately pull it out, press the button to make the key fold out, and I stare at him for a second. I believe he was caught off guard because he stopped walking for a second. Well, that second was all I needed. I immediately took off running at top speed, crossed the street, and kept running down it. I'm no Olympian, but I was on the cross-country team at D2 College, and I still run multiple times a week, so I'm pretty confident that I can outrun the average person I run into by a comfortable margin. Still, I didn't take any chances and ran all the way back to the hospital. So what do you guys think? I'm not crazy, right? I'm not necessarily saying that I was going to be the next prominent murder victim or kidnapping victim, but there was definitely something going on here, right? Recently, there was an Amber Alert, and my daughter was asking me what the beeping sound was all about. For those who don't know, an Amber Alert goes out when a child is reported missing. If you receive notifications, you know what I'm talking about. The alert will sometimes give information, like the victim's appearance, as well as the perpetrator, the location of the abduction, make and model of the vehicle, 
that sort of thing. My phone started beeping one evening while helping my daughter clean her room. An Amber Alert. She asked about it. I gave her a small rundown, and that was that. However, it triggered a whole childhood memory I have, where I believe with all my heart that I was almost kidnapped when I was a kid. To be clear, this isn't a memory that was laying dormant in my subconscious, and this random Amber Alert and talk with my kid caused it to resurface in my mind. This incident is something I've pondered and thought about on and off for years now. I'm a 41-year-old man, by the way. It's just been a while since I've considered the factors and details of the experience, and this recent Amber Alert and talk with my daughter really caused me to pause and reflect on the incident itself once again. And now here I am. As a parent, you worry about these things and do all you can to protect your children, especially when you personally experienced something truly scary like this. The occurrence happened when I was just a young kid. I would guess I was around seven to eight years old. I can't be sure, but I think that's a safe estimate based on the fact that much of those early childhood memories aren't there anymore. I do remember my kindergarten experience, which I would have been five to six years old, and also later grades. So this incident must have happened sometime after or around the ages of seven to eight. My parents took me to a neighboring city to do some shopping. We lived in a small rural town with not much on offer, so from time to time we would go to this neighboring city about 45 minutes from where we were located. It just had more to offer. They would take me up there for school clothes shopping, out to eat because the restaurants were better, and because my mom was a crafter. She loved to make crafts. It was her thing. There were different craft stores and a fabric store she liked going to up there. This specific trip, we went to a fabric store up there, Joe and Fabrics to be exact. This was a pretty big store. As a little kid, I guess most places seem big, but no kidding, this was a sizable store. My dad sat out in the car while I went in with my mom. He did that a lot, sit in the car when there was a store he just didn't want to go into so I can't blame him there. I can't recall exactly what my mom was looking for or trying to get in that store that day, but I do remember what section we were in, an area with a bunch of racks with various fabrics hanging from them. Imagine a clothing store with circular racks with clothes hanging around them, and that's pretty much what it's like at this fabric store, racks of hanging fabrics. I remember this area being slightly toward the beginning or the entrance of the store. As my mom was looking through these racks, I begin to wonder, though not far, just enough to kind of look around myself. I was probably bored and started wandering around, is my guess, but I could still see my mom just up and over a few racks away, so it wasn't like I was on the other side of the store or anything. A random man approached me, and honestly, I can't even remember at what direction he came from. It's just like I was there by myself one minute, and the next, I looked up and saw this guy. It was like he came in fast and out of nowhere. I quickly looked over to where my mom was. She had moved a few racks up and away, but I could still see her. There was a bit of distance between my mom and I at this point. So here I am, standing behind a rack of fabric with this older guy, opposite me on the other side of this rack. Then he speaks. Hey little boy, how are you doing there? I remained silent because this took me completely off guard. He asked, where's your folks at? Are you alone in here? I stood still and quiet. Come here, I got something to show you. At this point, he started advancing toward me, coming around the rack to where I was. I quickly started the other way, but he stopped and started coming around the other way as well, as if to meet me in the middle. I was scared at this moment and became instantly aware that this man seemed dangerous and like he was trying to get a hold of me. Come here, he barked. I jerked fast to the left, but he did the same. He had this wild look in his eyes. Whichever direction I went, he followed. But remember, there's a rack between us. 
God, I'm so thankful for that wreck. After some back and forth movements from me and this man, I finally lock in on my mom and yell, Mom, help. You would have thought I screamed bloody murder, it was so loud. But it got my mom's attention. What's wrong? She asked. This startled the man, and he looked over his shoulder in the direction of my gaze and confirmed, Yeah, that must be his mother. His demeanor completely changes, and it's as if everything is just fun and games, and that he was just messing around, and he said as much to my mom. I was just messing around with him. No harm, ma'am. My mom came to where I was, and as we reconnected, the guy just tips his hat at my mom and makes his way out of the store. I explained to my mom what just happened, that this guy was trying to get me. I was so upset and shaken up. She told me I did the right thing by yelling and getting her attention. It was terrifying for sure, and I'm thankful something crazy didn't happen. Could I have been imagining things, like maybe this guy was really just messing around? I very much think there were nefarious intentions. Why would a random older guy be perusing in a fabric store? If he was there for something like crafts or fabrics, why promptly leave when confronted? I truly believe he was up to no good. Anyway, that's my story. I appreciate anyone taking the time to listen. This happened about four years ago. Funnily enough, I now live in this house, but I didn't at the time. For context, it's a very large double story with a tall, timber side gate joining the house to the garage, and on the other side of the house is a pool with a gate that goes out to a public walking path along the river. The path is on a levee about three meters high because of flooding. This is my sister's house. It's a very nice area. Unfortunately too close to a caravan park owned by bikies, known for meth production and distribution. There have been many break-ins and creepy stalkerish incidents here over the past few years. Even someone doing something inappropriate to themselves in an old lady's backyard several times, released a week later every time. I was followed while walking my dog and a neighbor came out to help me get back safely. So anyway... One day my sister calls from work. Her little dog has gotten out onto the road. Someone has her safely. So I go to the house and pick the dog up. And I go to enter through the big, heavy side gate, which was open. It's a windy day, so I assume the gate blew open. Usually, we sit a very heavy weight at the bottom of the gate, so it can't blow open on windy days. I get the dog back in and I put the weight at the bottom of the gate and take a picture. I enter the yard and realize the laundry door is open. Cursing my sister because she did that regularly for the dog, I enter the house and realize the door to the hall is also open, which is something she definitely does not do. I walk in and have a look around. Then suddenly, this really heavy, dark feeling came over me. I have never had a gut feeling as overwhelming as this one. I get straight out of there, closing all of the doors behind me and leaving through the other side gate by the pool. I was shaking. I called her and said, I think someone's in your house. She left work and I waited for her at the end of the street. We went back to the house through the pool gate. The big heavy gate was closed, but the weight was moved to show it had been opened. Both doors I closed were open. Someone had been in the house when I went in there. Later, she told me there'd been a man standing on the path outside of her house, pretending to stretch, looking at her house instead of the river for a few weeks or so prior. And yes, she got a massive talking to for leaving the door unlocked.
Hello everyone. I live in rural southwest Virginia in Appalachia and heard odd whistling in the woods a few days ago at night. It started when I was playing airsoft alone in the woods at about 7 p.m. in almost pitch black. I live a lonely existence and I was walking around the woods behind my house. I got to a clearing just on top of a hill and sat down to take a rest. Just when I sat down, I heard odd whistling. It was perfect whistling and whistled a tune I'd never heard before. It was clear and it sounded close, within 150 feet or less, and it came from directly behind me. It had to have been in the woods and near the property line with one of the neighbors. It instantly gave me chills down my back and I got the feeling of being watched. I, not being an idiot and having a brain, wasted no time in sprinting full speed down towards my house, hopping over rocks and limbs. The whistling stopped shortly after I got moving, but I still felt like I was being watched and like something was off. When I did turn back to look while opening the gate, I didn't see anything but that may be because of the darkness and the distance I had moved. I don't think it was a bird, as the leaves in the trees haven't regrown yet, and it still stays cold at night and sometimes during the day, but I don't know much about birds. I also doubt it was a person, as I heard no talking, no leaves crunching, and no other noises. I should also mention that the whistling started out of nowhere and did not gradually get louder as if someone or something was moving closer while whistling. I should also mention that I've been in these woods a decent amount of my life and I've never heard anything like it before, not even once. I was a bit tired, but I've been more tired before while being in those woods at similar times and I'm also not one to hallucinate. The situation still gives me chills when I think about it. I've had the feeling of being watched before in those woods, but those feelings have never been so intense and extreme as that one night. I was hoping if anyone might know what it was. Was it an animal? Maybe, but we have dogs around the house and most wild animals stay away and I haven't really seen anything outside of a bear or two, and some deer in those woods. I should also mention the dogs occasionally bark randomly into the woods, but they weren't really barking at the moment when the whistling happened. I was hoping if anyone could identify what it was, and I'm not saying it was paranormal, but I'm not saying it was just a wild animal. Many years ago, when my daughter was potty training, a friend recommended I keep a travel potty with me. It saved me from rushing to find a restroom and avoiding stopping in anywhere questionable with a toddler. We would drive about 40 minutes to pick up my husband on his lunch break. That afternoon, we were headed back to drop him off at work and were only about a block from the restaurant when my daughter said she needed to go. The area we had just headed into was a large business park area with lots of very large buildings to the left and right. I saw one and the parking lot looked empty. I pulled over to the side of the building and parked at a curb. I had two car seats taking up my back seat and my husband in the passenger seat. So I took my daughter out of the car and set her up in the trunk to use the potty. I had just got her settled and she was looking uncomfortable and covering her face and looking down. I looked behind me and I see a woman walking up to me. It was summer at the time and very warm. She was wearing a jean skirt and a tank top and had a crossbody purse. She looked at my daughter and said, don't be embarrassed, we all go through it, and laughed. She said she needed a ride to the freeway and asked if I could take her. I told her that I was sorry, but I couldn't. She started to seem bothered and asked why I couldn't take her. I said the back seat is full, so I didn't have room for her. 
She snapped back. So you're telling me you put your daughter in the front seat? I told her no, that my husband was the one that occupied it. As soon as she heard that I wasn't alone and had my husband with me, she started to slowly back away and walk down the street that she came from. As she was walking away, she said, Oh, I'm sorry. I used to be from here, but not anymore. And she quickly walked off. If she would have made a left on the cross street she was walking towards when going towards my car, there were restaurants and gas stations a block up, plenty of people to ask for a ride. I still am so grateful my husband was with me that day. I don't know what her true intentions were, but getting a ride to a populated area didn't seem to be one of them. I'm going to describe something that's happened to me twice in my life, and I'd like to know if anyone else has ever experienced this. So first of all, I'm 34 years old, and I've met thousands of people in my life, so this is a very rare thing I'm talking about. The first time it happened was with a girl. We were both in a store, and she saw me first. I noticed her staring at me, and a very, very weird feeling came over me. It's hard to explain. I knew she was a stranger, but at the same time, I did know her. It was like a very distant feeling, but I felt it. And then we both smiled like we were seeing an old friend, and we talked for a while about our lives, and basically anything about ourselves that we could think of. And then there was a moment when it was like reality hit us both at the same time. She teared up and gave me a hug. And I remember saying, yeah, it was really good meeting you. And she said, yeah. And then I replied, I guess I'll see you around. And I don't remember her response, but I never saw her again. The second time was at a park. It was a guy this time. We noticed each other at the same time and smiled almost to the point of laughing. At least for my part. Like with the girl, I didn't know him, but I got the same distant feeling. And like with the girl, we told each other about our lives and talked for a long time about things ranging from our childhoods to where we were now. I don't remember how we parted, but I do remember reality setting in the way it did with the girl. And then things become a little awkward. I also don't remember how we parted. Now, for the record... I did consider the possibility that we were childhood friends or something, and they recognized me, and I simply didn't recognize them. I genuinely had never met these people in my life. All you can do is believe me when I say that. As I'm writing this, I also think maybe some will think I'm just nuts and struck up conversations with strangers in an overly friendly way, and they just kindly went along with it. This is not the case, but I have no way to prove it. So basically, I don't expect anyone to believe me, but I'm curious if anyone else has experienced this before. When I was in college, I was walking across campus to my early morning class when this old white man with the bluest eyes I'd ever seen stopped me to ask for bus ticket money. Everything went still around us. No sounds. The air felt stiff, and there was literally no one but us outside. This man's eyes were like aquamarine, but the rest of his face, it was like his skin was plastered on. His nose looked stuck on like clay. His cheeks looked like they were barely hanging on to whatever was underneath. He looked truly bizarre. He stops me and compliments my lipstick and asks if I could help him pay for a bus ticket so he could visit his son. I told him I didn't have cash to help him. He never breaks eye contact and tells me he's a veteran and takes his wallet out to show me his military lapel. When he opens it, I see a wad of cash in there and he looks at me again 
and asks if I could help. While all this was happening, the only thing I felt was that I was in danger. I truly thought I was in the presence of someone evil, though he didn't say or do anything to provoke that feeling. I ended up reaching in my bag for quarters and gave them to him. He held my hand for what felt like forever, and then let me go on my merry way. I think about this encounter a lot because it felt like he was pretending to be human. His skin looked like it was made out of wet clay and wrongly placed. His eyes were so blue, they looked unnatural, and why ask for money when you already had it? I got home really late from a trip one night. It was about two in the morning. I had to park on a dimly lit side street to get to my place. As a single female in her late twenties, I call someone when I have to walk alone in the dark like that. I call my dad, who's in a different time zone about three hours behind. He knows the drill and we're just chatting. As I'm walking up the hill to my condo building, there's a cluster of small trees and shrubs across the street where a fence ends and a bank parking lot begins. Two shady looking guys come out, one smoking. At first, I thought they were out for a smoke. They then started walking toward me, not toward another building or car, me. They then separate and one is on either side of me, which felt like I was being surrounded. As this happens, I tell my dad, which they can both hear from where they are. I have two guys coming toward me. I think you need to call the police, I say. As soon as that happened, they made a 90 degree turn and headed back down the street. I still think about it often. I sometimes feel like I'm blowing things out of proportion, especially when I consider that there were two nearby residential buildings that would have heard screams and that the threat of someone calling the police on the other end of the phone wasn't much of a threat, because who knows police response times. Then I go back to my gut feeling. The way they came out of the cluster of trees made a beeline to me, then surrounded me in a creepy way that I can't explain, like they were very close on an open road. I still don't know whether it was all in my head or not, but that was a terrifying experience. Since that time, I've parked in the bank lot that's well lit. I have to get up and move my car when they open at 8, but that scared some sense into me. It scared my poor dad as well. This happened to me a while back. I was roughly 16 and just couldn't sleep. At 2 a.m. I heard this loud noise that made me jump. I'd never heard a noise quite like it. The sound was a cross between a giggle and a scream. I paused my show and turned on the light. There was nothing there though. As I turned around to go back to my bed, I saw what looked like a shadow of a woman standing in the hallway. I froze. Did she see me? She began to walk towards my room, which was the opposite end to my parents' room, so I was worried that she was going to come and get me or something. As she got closer, I backed away from the door and started to go towards the left side of my bed. Next to my bedside table, I keep a bat for self-defense. I grabbed a bat and hid behind the side of my bed, praying the woman hadn't seen me. After about a minute, there were footsteps going down the stairs. I breathed a sigh of relief and got up, going back to close my door. As the door closed, it hit my toe. Now these doors were heavy, and back then I was a proper Slim Jim. I had no padding, so when the door hit my toe, I let out a quiet, shit. At that point, I realized what I had done. The lady's head whipped around, and we locked eyes. She came back up the stairs and came heading towards my room. I tried my best to shut my door, but before I could, she got her foot into it. Your father said everyone was asleep. Why are you up? My mouth opened, 
but words wouldn't come out. I was terrified. The lady pushed open my door, thrusting me to the floor. You were gonna forget that you ever saw me, young man, and you're going to go straight to bed. Do you understand? Suddenly, I heard my parents' bedroom door open. I shouted out, and in comes my dad. Shh, Indigo, for goodness sake, you're gonna wake up your brothers. Sandra, I thought you were leaving. I stopped for a moment. You know this creepy witch. My dad gave me the, if I could scream at you right now I would look, and told the woman to leave. You were not to tell your mother about this, Indigo. Go to bed. The next morning I woke up and figured what had happened. My dad was having an affair. My mom traveled a lot with work, so he was probably sleeping with the Sandra person every time she was away. That pissed me right off. Luckily my mom was back once I woke up, and so I thought she deserved to know. I wasn't going to tell her directly yet though. I wanted to see if I could pressure my dad into it first. So dad, fun night last night. He almost choked on his breakfast. He didn't break though. My mom asked what I was talking about, and he just said he went out with some friends for some beers, and by the time he got home, everyone was asleep. In the end, he never told her. So the next time she went away and Sandra came and slept with my dad, I told her, and they got a divorce. Ten years ago, my ex and I were struggling for money and ended up moving into a cramped old flat in a 1920s hotel that had been converted into flats. We initially were offered the second floor flat, but despite being nicer, there was this air of dread in it. We both felt very uncomfortable in it, like we shouldn't be there. So we ended up taking the first floor flat. Within a month of us living there, a young girl moved in above us. She screamed, banged, and came in and out at odd hours. My ex would bang on the ceiling, and she'd stop for a bit before starting up again. We complained, and then three months later, it stopped for the most part. We still heard heavy, slow stomps on the ceiling, closing doors, and an occasional low moan. It wasn't anywhere near as bad as before, and only really happened at night, so we just gave up trying to get her to shut up. One night, we were laying in bed about to sleep when the stomping began. It started quiet before getting louder and louder until it was right above our heads. My ex lost it. He went upstairs and banged on her door. No answer. He came back downstairs and when it continued, he banged on the ceiling, shouting, Shut the hell up. We've had enough. It stopped and we finally got some sleep. The next day, I was complaining to the ground floor resident, Emma. She looked confused, then told me the girl had abandoned the flat a month ago, just up and left during the night. I told her I must have been mistaken, but my ex and I were very confused. I reported it to the landlord, who said he'd been doing minor repairs, but only during the day, and that he would change the locks in case the girl had been coming and going. Things settled for a bit, but then weird things started happening. Keys left on the side would disappear and show up in the kitchen drawer. Doors would be open when I swore I closed them. I was having mental health issues at the time, and my ex told me I must have been doing it. So I just left it. I stopped mentioning the weird occurrences because he wasn't very supportive, and he always blamed me for them. Then it happened. I was alone cooking in the kitchen with my headphones in. I remember it was stormy outside, and the wind was whipping up against the window panes. Suddenly, I got this eerie feeling that I should run, so I took out my headphones and looked into the lounge. Nothing. Still, the feeling persisted, and I felt the hairs on my arms stand up. I needed to pee, but to get to the bathroom, you had to go into the bedroom. Something told me not to go to run, but I ignored it and went to the bedroom and opened the door. It was dark, but I could plainly see someone sitting on our bed. I shut my eyes, 
hoping it was just tiredness or my mental issues. But no, there she was when I opened my eyes. My hand was stuck on the door handle, and my whole body froze, when suddenly the person started turning their head towards me. I can see her face now, grayish blue, black where the eyes should be, a mass of long black hair down her shoulders. I screamed, ran out of the flat and downstairs, crying and hysterical. I banged on Emma's door and she let me in. As she calmed me, her husband went to check the flat, but said no one was there. I was too scared to go back up, so I sat with Emma until I calmed down. My ex came home and we went back up. He asked me why I was so anxious. I lied and said it was the storm. I felt I couldn't tell him. He would either laugh or say I was a psycho. I went to the doctor and told him about it, and a month later I was diagnosed with bipolar disorder and given medication. I saw the woman once more in the mirror behind me, but I just shut my eyes and walked out. I told myself it was just my bipolar and that soon the meds would work. Three months later, we moved into another house. We were chatting about how happy we were to be rid of the place and how creepy it had been. When my ex laughed nervously and said he hoped the woman hadn't followed us, my blood froze and I asked him what he meant. He told me that a few times he'd woken up to see a woman with a gray face and no eyes standing at the end of our bed, staring at me. He was in a bad place at the time and assumed it was night terrors. I remember one night where he woke screaming and dashed to turn on the lights. He said it was a nightmare, but he now told me it was because he'd woken to the woman lying above me, almost parallel, staring at me. As I said before, I had never told him about her. We laughed it off, but I was creeped out for a while. A few years ago, Emma popped up on my social media. We got chatting and the topic of the woman came up. She didn't laugh. Instead, she told me that she heard that the flat above us used to be rented by an elderly lady decades before who had drowned in the nearby lake just days after her husband left her for another woman. I asked her why she hadn't said anything at the time, but she said I'd been so hysterical at the time that there was no point upsetting me further. I still think about this sometimes. I've been medicated for years and manage my symptoms well. I don't really believe in the paranormal. It seems a bit far-fetched, but I still sometimes wonder whether that woman was a shared hallucination or something much, much worse. My parents' house got hit by a tornado when I was in high school. You don't realize how fast those things happen until you've been in that situation. We live in rural North Carolina, not exactly Tornado Alley, but we do get some bad storms now and again. My dad had this habit of liking to sit out and watch thunderstorms come in. We were all inside when we hear him yelling for us to come out. We walk out, and the sky just looks surreal. There was a wall of black clouds sweeping towards our house at a disturbingly fast pace. When I say black, I don't mean really dark gray or steely blue. I mean black. Jet black clouds, like an ink cloud from a giant octopus, was squirted into the sky. I've never seen it before in my life, not even on a video, and I hope to never see it again. So, we were pretty freaked out by the clouds and the wind was picking up. I mean those clouds were moving fast. Someone, I think my mom, said something to the effect of we should get inside just to be safe. But things start going crazy even before we can turn around. The wind goes from a 7 out of 10 on the windy scale to a 25 in like 3 seconds. We turn to get inside and I'm the last to go through. I try to pull the door closed behind me but the wind is sucking the door open. I have to put both hands on the doorknob and jerk back with my full weight to get the door to shut. 
At this point, it's probably been 45 seconds since my dad called us outside. We run to the hallway and start throwing things out of the closet under the stairs and climb in. The whole house is full of this absolutely indescribable roaring noise. It was like a jet was taking off on our roof, or a train was driving through the living room. It wasn't so much sound as it was physical force. It made your head throb, it was so loud. You could feel it constantly in the pit of your stomach, like the boom from a loud bass speaker. But instead of having a beat, it was just constant. It felt like your eyeballs were quivering in your head. The pressure changes from the wind also screws with your sense of balance. I kept getting that sense of vertigo you feel when you're standing at the top of a cliff looking down. It was an absolutely sensory overload. We all jump under the stairs and shut the door when we realize we left the dog out in the house. My mom opens the door and yells for the dog, who comes barreling into the closet like a bat out of hell. We shut the door. At this point, it's been maybe a minute and a half, just 90 seconds since we were sitting in the kitchen chatting, and my dad yelled at us to come outside and look at these crazy clouds. That's how long it took to go from normal evening to absolute terror. We sat under the stairs for maybe that much time again. Two minutes, probably three at most. It seemed like a lot longer, of course. Everything was shaking. I was just waiting for the walls to tear apart around us, or debris to start smashing through the door. Then the sound passed and we came out. The house was still standing around us, so far so good. We got back out on the front porch, and the door won't open. I give it a heave and push it open a few feet and squeeze out. The porch is destroyed. We had a small barn sitting in front of our house and it had been obliterated. The tornado had picked up in the barn. It turned into kindling and threw it at our house. The posts on the front porch were all destroyed and it was just covered with broken glass, nails, shattered 2 by 4s and pieces of particle board. Looking out over our pasture in front of our house, where we kept a horse and some cows, and there were just masses of trees down everywhere. One stand of pines to the south of our house, probably about two or three acres in total, were just gone. Our cars were pockmarked with hail damage. Our full-size pontoon boat that we used for family trips to the lake on weekends had been picked up from the front yard, rotated 90 degrees, and deposited in the backyard about 50 yards away. Behind our house, a massive poplar tree was down over the driveway and had fallen just feet from the house. Yet other things remained weirdly untouched. One of our barns was destroyed, but the other, standing maybe 30 yards away, wasn't even missing a shingle. All in all, we were incredibly lucky. The house sustained major damage, despite its appearance though. The roof had to be replaced because the suction from the tornado had made it unstable. In fact, to this day, you can still see the cracks in the walls in the corners of the top floor, where the tornado had nearly sucked the roof off of the house. But, we came out of it. None of us hurt, and we even slept in our own beds that night. So, when I see stories like those out of Oklahoma a few days ago, I always think back to those few minutes of terror and think how lucky I was that those weren't my last moments, as they were for so many there. I used to work a graveyard shift in retail. Basically, it was a clothing retailer. And when the mall closed, I would come in and clean the store up, fold the clothes, fasten security tags, that kind of thing. I didn't have a car, so my day was me waking up at midnight, walk two hours and get in an hour early to start my shift. Well, the road I took has no gas stations, businesses, or any sort of public place until a halfway point at a park. And I suddenly have the problem with my stomach not agreeing with what I ate before I left. So, I remember that the park has a public restroom. Now, 
This restroom was basically a basin with a drain for the urinal, a low-pressure sink, and a stall. The public restrooms had no door. We just opened going in, and a grate made an opening for whatever light to come in. There were no lights inside whatsoever. So, I used my phone flashlight, go to the stall, lock it, and do my business after turning off the phone light. A couple of minutes pass of me looking at my phone, and I hear loud, heavy boot steps coming into the bathroom. Now, I know people make the joke of, bet you're glad you weren't on the toilet. No, I learned fear makes your ass clench faster than a cigar cutter. I hold my breath as I hear these boots walk up to the stall and try the door. Thankfully, I locked it. I was about to say occupied when this being grunts and growls and starts rattling the door. I stood up, getting my pants up quickly, getting ready for a brawl, and I yell, I'm armed. If you do not stop, I will open fire. Now, the scary part was, I was bluffing. I had nothing, no knife, no gun, just two fists and a load of adrenaline. The next thing I hear is these footsteps tear out like a bat out of hell. I wait a couple of moments, tighten my belt and make like a bat myself, my hands up ready for what there may be. Thankfully, no one was there. I never sprinted so fast to that job and I never stopped at that part. Again. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed that. If you have a scary story you'd like me to read on the channel, please send me an email or post it to my subreddit. You can find details of this in the video description. It's the stories that make this, and this is the best way to ensure variety in the stories I share. Thank you all for listening, and a special thanks to my channel members and patrons who now have special access to ad-free videos and other behind-the-scenes content. Becca, Lydia Adams, Girl Veteran, Legends CBZ 69 2012, Katrina King, Hospital Cakewalk, Dirty Diana, Quinta Siegel, Shirley Porch, Taylor Ruist, Annalisa Petrie, Jasmine Davis, Janelle Jensen, Jasper Roth, Alex, Monica Levelais, James Gargano, Sarah P, Fire 05, Matt is a Felter, Tierra Sanders, Melissa Kingery, Kitty Cat Luna 2, Chelsea Moffat, Ryan, Gabrielle, Jenny, Sarah, Zep Tepe, Sarah C. Sam, Amanda Jane, Vampy Debs, October Gypsy, Rebecca, Erica B, Maribel De Luna, Lloyd Rash, Jennifer Jenkins, Kelly Townsend, Mary Wright, Tara Harris, Elizabeth Knapp, Eddie, Sean Gorman, Sue Gordon, Spider's Web, Kay, Christy, Absinthe Alice, Dina Kingery, Snowball Rathena, Lady Drackard, Brenda, Pretty Girl 215, Amber Davis, Sigma Cube X, Leticia Acklin, Ali O'Neill, Gina Eberhardt, Lilypad, Ashley Nicole, Sara Chifalo, May 2nd, 2003, Bella Plays, 2006, Skin Crawler, Stephanie McLaren, Borderline Betty, Kuro, Top Off, Kelly Ann Bain, Michael O'Malley, Neil Kavanagh, The Dead Movie Society, Diana Johnston, Taya Adwell, Danielle, Possum Posse, Crafty Kell, Brooke, Scott McKenzie, Megan Abrams, Jane Wiggins, Jasmine Davis, Jack White, Your Pappy's Dilly, Emma Lisa, Tanya Ferguson, The Wendy, Ember Hops, Alexia Tuttle, Ram Beltran, Elizabeth Mayers, Unladylike 13, Pegasus Genesis, Sheila Grant 44, Sona, Scout Mom 405, Cheryl Duckworth, Ashley Bray, Angela Reeves, Kim Thompson, Brock Bollard, 
Nick Bigdowski, Jessica Lasley, Yennefer, Clary Scott, Timothy Stratton, Melissa Kingery, Shane Stevens, Serge Vargas, Bart in Real Life, April Jordanet, Lisa Prentice, Mason Hayes, Sarah Price, Jasmine Thomas, Angie Lindop, Z. Harris, Kirby Harris, Yolo Sapien, Lavina Cordelia, Misty Racour, Michelle Green, Dixie Busby, Paula Ferreira Nieves, Samantha Place, Donna Cox, Stephen Wheeler, Melissa Moore, Deshaun Edmondson, This Bad Kitty, Gloria, Christina Myway, Connie Sue, Carol Zeferano, Merciful Humming, Kelsa Rundle, Ashley Juster, Vicki Howell, Joe Tozer, Zoe D, Nicholas Johnson, Kimmy Love. Once again, thank you guys for listening. Have a great night.